All right, this is my first attempt at a, a vlog. I'm gonna, it's gonna be just how it is. I'll get better at it if I decide to do it anymore. But um, this is my first attempt at a vlog and I'm gonna do it over the period of this weekend. I'm just gonna record everything I do and then I'll try and stitch it together to see if it, if it looks any good. But anyway, so this is my first attempt. As I said, um, I'm, I may continue to do it. I got a bit of motivation off of uh, Kimmy's Reef uh, today. He sent me a motivational video, so um, I'm all about doing it. So my routine when I get home is um, I check the tank, uh, which is behind me. I don't have an orange filter on this, so it's gonna look all blue. Um, make sure uh, everything's looking okay. And in fact, if I turn the camera around, uh, you'll see that uh, the anemone that was creeping around the corner is uh, is slowly creeping back in the other direction, which is uh, which is pretty good. And it looks like one of my um, shrimps or something has uh, molted because uh, there's a bit of it um, blowing in in one of the MP40s there. So yeah, I check the tank and uh, make sure everything's okay, and then I start to um, make up their dinner. Uh, they they get fed throughout the day by my uh, gorgeous assistant and uh, when I get home I feed them and what I do actually is I feed them um, I turn turn I don't turn the return pump off but I turn the mp40s off and I feed them in this corner where that uh, where the um, the male clownfish is and they know they get fed there and then everyone gets um, a piece of food and and I'll show you what food I use in a minute uh, and that's generally what I do on a day-to-day -day basis so uh, yeah that's what I do when I get home and so this, uh, this is what happens next, in the freezer, get the food out. I mix this up every day, but uh, today they're going to get some mysa shrimp. They're going to get some uh, hikari brine shrimp. <clears throat> and they always get um, some LRS re re frenzies. They always get that. And what I do with that is I dice it up like um, I'm dicing up an onion, like really finely chopped onion. And I just let it defrost a little bit on this cutting board. And then I stick it in, I, I probably have a good 10-15 um, pieces of that and then I just throw half of it in and, and they go crazy for it and then I start adding the brine shrimp and the, um, and the, and the mysis. And then throughout the day, uh, my able-bodied assistant is feeding, uh, feeding this at the moment so they get uh, a little bit of those uh, spirulina flakes from Ocean Nutrition and they also get some of this colvo. Um, CA mysis. Uh, they seem to like that. The only one that doesn't like the um, spirulina is the is the tang, and I don't mind that because she doesn't need to be fed during the day. But um, the the ras, my mystery ras, Malcolm, he um, he misses out on a lot of stuff because uh, of those uh, the stupid design of the ras where the eyes are on the side of their head. He really it takes a lot for him to target his food. It's got to be right in front of him and, and even then he'll miss it a lot of the time. I don't know if any of you noticed that they got a rasp, but that's what happens. So it's great that the Tang doesn't like that um, spirulina stuff because uh, it gives him chance to eat during the day and Sarah really doesn't feed it as well as I do. Um, she, she just kind of throws it in there under the water and walks away and doesn't make sure everyone gets a bit. So anyway, um, that's what I'm feeding uh, tonight is this stuff and um, Oh yeah, look what's in this box. It's come from Marine Depot. Um, we'll open that later. So this is what I cut. Um, I took a... Uh, there's the... Uh, it gets in focus. There's the um, Reef Frenzy. Bit of mysis. I'm not going to feed all that mysis. Um, some of the brine shrimp block cut up. And then that piece of brine shrimp, what I do with that, that goes in that cup and I put a little bit of water in that and then after I fed this initial food here um, now right I'll feed that within the next um, yeah I'll give them five minutes to, to eat that um, in fact that might be a little bit too much brine shrimp we'll, we'll see but anyway um, I'll feed the rest of what's ever left in the cup throughout the night and I'll do that from about so the time now is uh, 4 30 so I'll feed the rest of that between uh, let's say about 5.30 and um, 8 o'clock tonight, they'll get the rest of what's in that cup in small little doses. And then that way, I know it's not all floating around the tank, they eat, they eat it up pretty much. This, this, this amount of food here will not only feed the fish, right? it'll, it'll, do, it'll do well to feed um, uh, the tank also. So that's, uh, that's what we're gonna do next. Okay, so the return pumps have been um, turned off. 
Uh, the return pumps I want to talk about, the, uh, the MP40s, the wave makers, they've been turned off. And um, actually, uh, there's uh, actually some uh, algae down there with um, some mice shrimp in it. I forgot, I normally feed that as well. So I'm going to grab this. Um, this goes in first actually because it gets the, uh, gets the Antheus going. They love this stuff. Well, everyone loves this stuff, but especially the Antheus. And with this, I just stick it in the corner here. And um, everyone goes nuts for that. And it's gone in about a matter of seconds. So that's stage one. Stage two is to bring a big old chunk of that brine shrimp over to this corner where I said was the feeding corner and everybody normally hangs over here. I'm going to wait until Malcolm comes back and uh, there you go, dump it in there. And uh, that's where they go nuts right in that corner. And what that does is it doesn't go, the, what, it doesn't go down the, um, the overflow. Well, maybe a little bit of it does, but most of it will go outwards into the tank and not go down, not go down the overflow. So anything that these guys are missing um, will, will end up in the, in the main tank and they'll, they'll all get a bit. So, and what, and what I do as well is I change my filter socks every day. So anything that does go down the overflow is either going to get, um, caught in the, um, the mesh sock, which is first in the, in the chamber, in the sump, and then the, um, the felt sock. So anything that I do overfeed and then goes down the overflow, it's only staying in my tank for about an hour because I'll let everything settle for an hour now and then, and then I'll change the filter socks and I do that every day. So um, back, to the, back to the chopping board and now we'll get some of that um, reef frenzy I have here. So a good old chunk in my fingers and then I'm going to dump that in here as well. I always wait for Malcolm to come over because he needs special attention and he's my boy. So once Malcolm's back in the vicinity, I dump all that in like that, give it a bit of a, a bit of a mix up and then everyone can, uh, can get a piece of the, of the reef frenzy. Now what I was to tell you about that reef frenzy is initially they, they like it and then they very quickly go off it. Um, as you're as you're noticing, right? They don't eat it as um, enthusiastically as they do the brine shrimp or any of the mice shrimp I put in. Um, I don't know what Malcolm's doing. He's uh, having said that, she's just eating a big old chunk. But you'll see the little bit of that re little tiny bits of that reef frenzy are coming off right in there. That's all feeding the tank. So the tank now is going wild. If I come around the front. Everything's everything's trying to get a bit of that reef frenzy that's uh, floating around, and basically I rinse and repeat that. Right, I'll go back and I'll put some brine shrimp in, and and everyone will get fed, and then I'll 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 put some more reef frenzy in. This takes me about five to ten minutes. Um, I, I make sure that they're eating everything before I put the next bunch batch of food in as much as I can. Um, and yeah, so that's my little regime that I do when I get home from work. Alright, so the next thing is, um, after I've fed the fish, I'll put in um, uh, Polyp Lab Genesis and I'll also put in the Nios Absolute Aminos. Now, if you um, looked at my uh, ICP test results uh, that I just got back, um, and that was via Coral View, Coral View you'll notice that um, the, um, oh, I can't remember the element. One of the elements that um, uh, relate to adding acids was way up there. And that's because I dose these acids every day religiously. And it really does help with the, uh, with the coral growth. So uh, I put um, three drops of the, of the Genesis in. And I put three drops of the Nios acids. And you may be asking, why are you not using the um, Polyp Lab acids? Well, that's because... I had ordered this Nios um, bottle of acids way before I got uh, got into Polyp Lab. So when that runs out, I'll, I shall switch over to the Polyp Lab stuff. All right, so um, everyone knows, or you should know, that uh, I am replacing my HD26s with a HD64s. 
Um, yep, you might say that's a little bit too much of the tank, but it's what I want to do. And um, I'm going to have them running kind of lengthways down the tank rather than front to back, if that makes sense. You'll see when I get them up and running. But uh, anyway, um, here's uh, the box from Marine Depot. And uh, I'm going to try and do a one-handed uh, newbie to vlogging unboxing. So forgive me, but I do have a, my favorite sharp, cheap knife. This thing's pretty awesome. Do everything with this. Look, it even cuts the wrong way. Um, I did a lot of research and I reached out to a ton of people on these lights. I wanted to give everyone a fair chance of the manufacturers to come back to me and tell me why I should uh, use their lights. And do you know what? Only one did and that was, um, I can't remember, I'll, I'll, I'll put it in. I'll put it in the video. I can't remember who it was but um, off the top of my head. But it was one of the ones, one of the manufacturers where you run a hybrid solution. They come back to me, they was very nice, talked me all the way through it. And it wasn't going to work out for me because it means, it would have mean I, I had to suspend these from the ceiling or put some something on the wall at the back and I really didn't want to do that. So um, this is what we ended up with. Um, the 64 HDs. Um, and I'm going to run them, the w so if you if you look on the box, that's the way they're going to be on the tank. They're not going to be front to back, if, if you know what I mean. Um, and I I did have water box call um, aqua illumination and uh, get them to see if these will take the weight, and uh, and they will. So these will get set up tomorrow. I'm not going to do it tonight. I'll do it tomorrow when the lights are off. Um, because I do need to move the the brackets in, so you have to excuse my uh, man-made lid. Still haven't got round to bloody measuring that up to get it done, but the brackets will move in slightly um, closer to the um, uh, return box there, overflow box. So they will they there will not be much of a gap between them at all. So it should give me spread all the way across the top, and I'm going to probably have them out as far as these ones. And then what that will do is I don't want I want light on the tops of those rocks, right? I don't need any light down the back there whatsoever. So as long as I'm getting a good spread on top of those rocks, and then the rest of the lights will cover the front of the tank and give me a good par down the bottom. That's what I'm trying to achieve with these lights, and I can't do it with those because they're too they're too small. I'm not knocking them at all; they've been fantastic. And if you look at the growth in the tank, it has been fantastic, but it's not given me what I want. So that's what I'm going to do. Anyway, back to those, uh, back to those lights. So uh, yeah, two. Um, I'm not sure if these come with uh, with the arms in in the box. I'm hoping they do. It doesn't matter if they don't, because I have some. When when you get the arm kit, they send you um, they send you the um, the, the the brackets for the for the light itself that connect to the to the, not the brackets the arms that, that connect to the bracket so I have them but I'm just hoping these these do have them in the box that means I, I don't have to dig around trying to find where I put them because I, I can't remember but uh, there you go two HD 64s and I'm really excited to use the moonlight mode on these actually I am going to like that because I am going to use that because I want to see what that does in terms of the tank in maybe helping it force to spawn or something like that. I'd love to see that happen. Had it happen once in the tank in England. Um, makes a bit of a mess, but um, it's so fascinating to watch. Um, anyway, that's uh, that's the lights for you. All right, so um, later on in the evening, um, I fed the, uh, fed the fish a little bit more. I'm quite happy that this uh, nanary is starting to move around a little bit. Um, it's not stinging the uh, the crap out of that uh, coral, but the uh, fish have been fed. So let's uh, take a wander into the um, garage, and this is uh, ready for it. Is where I uh, make all my water, and I'm just making some up actually for uh, a water change either on Sunday um, or Monday. I did the last one on Monday, but this is basically where I uh, I keep all of my uh, all of my kit for uh, my tank. So you see, there's a ton of stuff behind me here. Um, ton of stuff that I don't have installed yet. Uh, but that's where I keep all my supplements and uh, everything like that. Um, 
over here. Um, it's where I put all my dead filters and they'll get washed uh, in the washing machine. Um, so yeah, there's a, there's, a lot, there's a lot going on in this garage. I don't keep a car in here. I mix up in these two bins. Um, as you can see, I have two, um, two, two pumps in there. Um, two marine land pumps, just little ones. I have one on the side that sends water around the, uh, the, the, um, the garbage can. I have a heater in the bottom and then one on the bottom that, uh, that pumps water up, which works well for me. Uh, I use Tropic Marine Salt and then um, I use the uh, HANA uh, sal salinity checker to, uh, to check the salinity. So uh, I'm just now going to, I put three bowls worth of salt in there, I'm just going to check the salinity now and then uh, it'll probably need a little bit more and um, come back later on in the night, see if it's ready and I mix it up over about a 24 hour period. So let's take a look what's in the box of these. Um, HD 64 lights from uh, Aqua Illumination. I don't know how people do this vlogging stuff with one hand, it's really difficult. Anyway, I got them in black. Um, I didn't get them in white. I think just white just was too much. My current lights are in white as well, so um, it made no sense to get these in white, even though uh, my tank is white. I thought it's, it's just a little bit too much. So I'm wondering. First off, if I can use the same power supplies that I'm using for um, my 26s, I doubt it. But if that is the case, I'll be uh, I'll be very pleased. These lights are massive um, and a lot more heavier than uh, than the 26s that I have. But um, this looks different as well. This connector, I'm pretty sure. I can't remember. It was a long time since I put them on. And well, I can tell you that the power brick is um, substantially bigger than the lights for the 26. So I will have to take these out. Not a problem. I don't have my um, 26s actually put into the uh, to the apex. So when I um, when I change these up, I will do that. Now you can't control them by the apex. I do have the WXM model, but that's for the ones that are enabled via um, Wi-Fi and these are these are all Bluetooth now. A bit of a step back with some aqua illumination on that one, but um, it is what it is. But um, what's not in here is the uh, is the brackets. So I will have to dig the brackets out. Um, they're somewhere in the garage, and uh, I'll get them all set up uh, ready for tomorrow. Uh, good morning, good day, reefers. If you watch uh, that show on uh, on YouTube. Gallery Aquatic TV, actually pretty good, I watch it all the time. Uh, just thought I'd turn the camera on this morning. Um, probably my favorite time of the day um, is watching the natural sunlight stream through uh, into the tank. No lights, um, just whatever's coming through the, uh, the window, pretty cool. Not all the corals are starting to wake up Picture up, they want their morning feed. Those antheas, they know where the feeding spot is, they come around this corner. But uh, pretty incredible, the, um, the view you get through here with just natural sunlight. I don't know if any of you are in the situation where you got your tanks placed where you get that coming through, but really, really cool. So today I'll be doing a, a water change. Um, I won't be putting on the new lights because uh, if you've been following my Instagram feed you will know that they are damaged so uh, I'm waiting for them to uh, tell me what they want to do whether they're going to send me some new ones or I have to send these ones back first but uh, that's the view of the, the tank in the morning without um, without any lights on pretty damn nice even if I do say so myself. All right, so we came out, um, little trip to the local fish store. Um, the one 
I use is uh, Emerald Bay Aquatics. They're in um, the Nashville area. Uh, to be fair, I've tried a lot of local fish stores around this area, and um, whilst this one may be small, the people in here are great, and um, the stock that they hold is pretty is pretty cool. So. Uh, we're going to go in there today and see what's going on. How you doing? Doing good. Yeah. Doing really well. So uh, this is the store and in fact I have some stuff ordered for me today. Um, and they're pretty good like that in here. You can pretty much order everything. I ordered uh, um, another bird's nest. Which this uh, gentleman is just uh, bagging up for me. You can see it in the bag there. There we go. We sprung a leak. Um, So let's have a walk around. Quite a few tanks in here. An assortment of fish. Can I have that in a tub? In a tub? You got a tub? But no, have you got a tub? Uh, let me check in that. Because I know what's going to happen otherwise. Hey right. guys, so uh, I wanted to give um, a bit of an update on uh, this Mithrax crab that I got in my tank. Um, when I when I got my live rock from Tampa Bay Saltwater, I'd um, come with all kinds of critters on there, and I think you need to be in the mindset when you um, get the rock from uh, somewhere like Tampa Bay, where it's coming straight from the ocean, you have to be in the mindset that you're going to get bad stuff with it. I think if you don't have that mindset, you're, you're, you're going to set yourself up for failure, because you're going to get frustrated with the amount of work that you have to put in to get rid of the bad stuff. Mostly with me, um, it was uh, gorilla crabs. Uh, I had a ton of them, and over the the course of about three or four months, I got rid of them. I certainly got rid of them before I had um, any corals in there that could have been under threat. But one thing I did also get, apart from a couple of pistol shrimps that are that are in the tank, were a bunch of uh, mithrax crabs. I also have a ton of um, emerald crabs in there and porcelain crabs, but they don't seem to bother anything but the mithrax crabs since I um, since the tank become more mature um, there's really nothing for the mithrax crabs to eat there's no algae in this tank whatsoever it's completely devoid of algae um, there's some on, on the back wall and, and I guess there is a tiny little bit on the rocks right and the the tang will pick at that but for the most part right there's there's nothing of nothing that's substantial and um and the mithrax crabs run out of food now i got two out i'm pretty sure i got two left but one of them i have left is a monster uh, and in fact it's just finished molting it, it went uh, on a on a vacation for about a week i didn't see it and then it's come back <laughs> it's like the incredible hulk this thing's kind of bursting out of its shell and well, not out of its shell out of its body but it's come it looked stunning right after the molt like a like a snake does when it sheds its skin, it looks absolutely stunning. But this thing is, there's no food for it, so it's picking on my coral. So the hardest thing is to get this thing, it's wily. It, it's wised up to me, it knows exactly every time the tongs come towards it that, uh, that I'm gonna have a stab at it. But um, I've not got it yet, but I will do. There's not one, there's not one critter in here yet that's, um, that's, that's, that's got away from me when I needed to get it. But anyway, I'll... Um, uh, again, right, it's this really blue on this lens because uh, I haven't got the filter on. But uh, this this coral here that's next to that uh, big shiny green thing, that was under attack last night, so it's probably lost half of its polyps. Um, this green thing at the back there, you'll see where it's white. That's actually where a crab's just crawled on it. I'm going to get it off in a minute with the tongs, but it had a go at that. Um, this brown... Polycopura, this is like one of the first corals I got put in there. He went to town on that last night and that's probably half as bushy as it was. Um, 
but this thing is a monster and I just cannot get it. He's very wily. And at some point he's going to find this bushy bird's nest. And when he does, he's going to have a field day. Um, so I'm hoping he doesn't, but uh, yeah, um, the Mithrax crab has been a problem. So um, I'll keep you updated on that actually. Um, and hopefully have some pictures posted on the Instagram when I uh, when I do get it out and it's going to take a, a one-way ticket to the local sewer system.